Hello, hello, everybody. Tonight, we are going to be continuing our Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright journey. And what a journey it's been so far. But tonight, it will be case four, though they continue to say, ah, it's actually episodes, even though they're cases. I don't get it, but who knows? But anyway, it is case four, Turnaby. Turnabite, Turnabout Goodbyes. Originally, I believe that this was the, like, uh, b -b -b last case of the original game. Like, that came out way, way back on uh, Game Boy Advance, I believe? Because I believe it was, like, Game Boy Advance, and then it came out on DS, and they added an extra case for the DS version. And added various, like, things like, Ah, see, it's a DS game now for the final case. Ain't that a thing? I wonder what the original players... Of, like, the original, like, Game Boy Advance, again, assuming it was Game Boy Advance. I'm making assumptions here. I just wonder if, like, the original players for the added case, what they thought of it. Because it's so long ago. I think it said it was 2001. Which is very interesting. I wonder how many other games actually do that. Like, ah, we're gonna, like, re-release the game. And it'll be, have, like, new content. Because, oddly enough, a lot of the time they kind of don't. I wonder, I wonder if they're going to add anything for that, uh, what, the, like, The Last of Us remake on PlayStation 5, and most baffi bafflingly, what is it, the Horizon Zero Dawn remake. That one I don't get at all. Who needs that? Who needs that just at all? It just makes no sense. But, bibbidi bibbidi bop, we get on with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Case 4, Episode 4, Turnabout Goodbyes. Ah, we open up with the sad music and a boat. And a boat. It's been what, 15 years? About that, yes. 15 years is a long time to wait. You can't imagine how much I've suffered. You've suffered? But now, the perfect opportunity has presented itself. Yes, the two of us alone on a boat. At last, I shall have my revenge. What? Merry Christmas. That, that's kind of a pitiful gun... <laughs> that's kind of a pitiful gun sound. And... Edgeworth, Edgy Boy, what have you done? Very interesting because I just want to comment on that trend because the first two cases showed who killed who and like went into it a bit more. But then case three it was just like, ah, yeah, you, you don't even see how it happened because how it happened was a big turning point of the case. That's just kind of interesting that they didn't keep the trend of like even alluding to who could have done it. But apparently Edgy Boy killed somebody. Hilariously after coming up to us and saying, You returning to my life has saddled me with unsettling feelings. How dare you write? I don't want to see you again. And then he went and apparently shot somebody. Let's find out. December 25th. Well, it was Christmas. 10.08 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Hey, hey, Nick. Do you know if there are any good waterfalls around here? Waterfalls? Dare I ask why? Duh, Nick. Isn't it obvious? I need a waterfall to stand under, preferably a freezing one. Oh, is that part of your spirited medium training? Of course, except I've been slacking off lately. I need to brave the elements and be forged anew under the rushing spring waters. Um, okay. I don't know about any falls per se, but Gord Lake is pretty close. Uh, darn. 
Sorry, but them's the breaks. Couldn't you just take a cold shower? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, the, the kind of, maybe. Do you need an actual rushing waterfall levels of pressure? Good idea! So much for rushing spring waters. Next in the news, a large unidentified animal was sighted at Gord Lake. Well, speaking of Gord Lake, it's the first time that we're like, hey, Gord Lake. And then the game is just like, yeah, Gord Lake five billion times now. The town is buzzing with excitement. Locals are calling it Gordy, and tip of the hat to Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Though its namesake Nessie proved to be a hoax, and that is true. At this point, Loch Ness Monster, like, even if you actually think about it way, way back, it's kind of always been a hoax. It's just people really are fascinated with the idea, ah, monster, mystery. Uh, no, it's actually not real. I think it was like a toy boat or something. Excuse me. Locals are confident their Gordy is the real deal. Ain't that just the way? Everyone's like, that one might be fake, but mine is real. Nah. Uh, boring. Can't they show real news for a change? Ah, uh, you, you, you god dang gun damn jinxed it, Phoenix. How dare you. Nick? The water pressure's kind of low in that shower. You want more pressure, huh? Why don't you go down to the fire department and have them spray you with a hose? Good idea, Nick! Apparently, Fey Blood is no aid in detecting sarcasm. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Strange occurrences continue at Gord Lake, but this time, it's murder. Gord Lake again? The body of a man was found in the lake early this morning. A suspect was apprehended. Sources inside the police department revealed that the suspect's name is Miles Edgeworth, age 24. Edgeworth was an up-and-coming prosecutor, known for his skill and connections. He was guaranteed a long, rewarding career. Has he thrown it all away? E Edgeworth? What's going on? Edgeworth would never do something like that. Nick? Yipes! The Maya! The fireman yelled at me when I called him. We got bigger things to worry about than that. They arrested Edgeworth. What? You mean the prosecutor? Yeah, he's a suspect in a murder. What? When? Where? Who? Why? How? Well, she covered all the bases. <laughs> covered all the basic questions. I'm pretty sure they're asking the same thing. Granted, in this, I think I heard it called a Japanifornia. Uh, they probably don't care. Like, ah, he's close to suspect. Go for him. Make him be the one. <laughs> Could they make him prosecute himself? Uh, in this world, who knows? I don't know. Let's go find out, Nick. Well, let's go to the... T we can go to Gord Lake, but let's talk to the man himself. December 25th, Detention Center Visitor's Room. You know, Nick, we've all been in here one time or another, haven't we? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I guess it comes with the territory. I'm not sure it's something we should mention to too many people. Hello, Edgeworth. Ah! He's angry, <laughs> and he just walks out? Hey, Edgeworth, come back! He actually came back. What are you doing here? Nick, I don't think he's in a very good mood. Well, he is in detention. Were you in a good mood when you were here? So you've come to laugh at the fallen attorney. Then laugh, laugh! Well, why aren't you laughing? Nick, should we be laughing? Nah, it's a trick. Laugh and he'll get mad or burst into tears. Edgeworth, we don't have much free time we can spend it coming... We don't have so much free time that we can spend it coming down here to laugh at you. Yes, you do. <laughs> He called our bluff. We have no jobs. Actually, he's right. I hoped you wouldn't come. I didn't want you to see me. Not like this. I didn't want to see you like this either, believe me. What happened? Edgeworth, tell me what happened. Why should I? What are you going to do about it? Duh! We're going to help you, that's what! Help me? You? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry? You're a novice. You've only been in three trials. That I've won, 
all of them being pretty, like, aside from the first one, all of them have been high-level murder trials. Or at least went on to involve high-level people. My first case, I didn't even get to do an investigation. And I still got out on top of just questions. And then, we go to the second one, my mentor was murdered. And I went and brought down an entire, like, intelligence agency. Through just pure determination. A guy that had, like, his fist wrapped around the throat of the entire goddamn city. Judges, attorneys, prosecutors, the whole shebang, politicians. I brought him to his knees, granted. I, uh, I, I did have supernatural help with the power of a ghost, but I still brought down the dude. And then my last one was a movie star in which I uncovered a five-year cover-up, uh, a lady with ties to the mafia, and it's just like it was a whole shebang, a whole thing. I basically sa I saved a TV show, goddammit. I've done a lot of things in just three trials, all of which I've won. Hey! Sure, you got lucky and won all three. Luck? Okay, okay, no, actually, the first one was luck because the criminal was kind of incompetent. The second one was luck because I had a ghost friend who could channel herself through her sister, uh, somehow growing her boobs. Maybe it's an illusion. Who knows? And then the last one, it just was... Uh, I think the last one, which oddly enough had no ties to me, None of my friends went up onto the stand that time as a defendant, or myself. The third case was actually the only one I went- Well, no, actually, uh, we did need your help, actually. <laughs> In the first one, we had the luck of the guilty party being stupid. The second one, we had a ghost friend. The third time, we had a prosecutor friend. So, okay, yeah, we've been extraordinarily lucky, but uh, come on. But your luck's bound to run out someday. You need real skill, right? Experience. Nick, he's insulting you. Nick, why am I always the one who has to get angry? Gord Lake. The murder took place at Gord Lake, correct? Yes, late last night. The lake is a long way. Oh, the lake is a long way away from your offices in the courthouse. Why were you down there? I see no need to tell you. Mr. Edgeworth, you... you didn't really. Gordy. Huh? I went to see Gordy. Gordy? What's that? I'll tell you later. Why won't Edgeworth talk to us? Because he is a uh, prideful fool. He is a prideful fool. Well, let's go to Gord Lake entrance. Why are the trees up front lacking leaves, but the trees behind them have leaves? It's kind of ominous. I like it. Okay, Gord Lake Park entrance. This is where it happened. Yeah, Gord Lake is in the middle of this park. I can see some police walking around in there. Ah, will we find Dick Gumshoe? Questioning people, probably. Hey, isn't that Detective Gumshoe over there? Will pal! There's enough of us here! Anyone found anything? I need to find my voice for him again. There's enough of us here! Anyone found anything? S sorry sir, nothing! Idiot! The trial's tomorrow! We need clues on the double! But, but sir there weren't any clues. That's why we arrested that attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear, sir. He's the one who- SHUT UP! Just you try saying that again! Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll make you sorry if you do! So just- just get out of my face, pal! Yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe's kind of scary today. Recruits. Pah! Ah! Eh. Hey! You have that hairy guy! Hairy butts! Right! Phoenix Wright! Will he ever learn my name? And just what are you doing here, pal? Investigating? Huh? Um, well, yes. I suppose. Well, I'm here to help! Ask me anything you want! Bring it! He seems different than usual. I wonder what's up. He wants to protect a friend Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't actually asked us to defend him yet. Huh? Oh, you don't say. What happened? 
Detective Gumshoe, do you know what happened here? Huh? You don't know, pal? No. Well, okay, Mr. Head in the Fluffy Pink Clouds lawyer. Head in the... huh? Never mind, I'll tell you. It happened last night about 15 minutes after midnight. There was a boat out on Gold Lake. In that boat were two men. One of those men shot the other with a pistol. And the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth? A cop who arrived at the scene arrested him. How did they get there so fast? Well, there was a witness. When the report came in, we raced to the lake. A witness? Edgeworth. You don't think Mr. Edgeworth is a murderer, do you? Absolutely not! It's impossible! I don't care if there's a witness either. I don't believe a lick of it. Right. Who cares what the witness says? I care! You really believe in him, don't you, Detective? Of course I do. But the police are pretty sure he's the killer. Nobody's even really taking this investigation that seriously. Oh, no! After all the help Mr. Edgeworth has been to us, hard to imagine that no one's standing up to take his side. Well, at least you are, Detective. At least you are. The defense request. Do you know who will be Mr. Edgeworth's defense attorney in tomorrow's trial? He hasn't got one yet. What? The trial is tomorrow, isn't it? Well, I don't know the whole story, but apparently no one he's been talking to will take his case. Why not? Mr. Edgeworth won't tell me. When you guys showed up, I figured he'd ask you to defend him. Unfortunately not. Well, pal, then you've got a job to do. Help out, Mr. Edgeworth. Prove that badge you wear isn't some just fancy piece of metal. Prove it to me, pal. Show me you're an attorney. I like, I like Gumshoe. Who was the witness? Uh, sorry, pal. That's confidential. Anyway, the witness saw everything, apparently. I'm pretty sure they'll turn up at tomorrow's trial. Is there only one witness? Yep, it was pretty cold out on the lake last night. And it was Christmas Eve, after all. Still, we're being through thorough. You never know when you're gonna turn up another witness. That's why we're here today, checking things out. So far, we're coming up empty. Oh, it's Christmas Day, I'd forgotten. What are you getting me for Christmas, Nick? Talk to Santa. <laughs> Darn, we don't have much. I guess we have to... Oh. Hmm. I guess let's... Uh, nothing else, so I guess we go back to the Wrighton Co-op offices. Or not. Do we have anything to present? Nope. Hmm. And nothing else. What if I present to you my lawyer badge? Your attorney's badge. Edgeworth, let me defend you. Good one, right? But I'm not that hard up. Not yet. W what do you mean by that? Me? Trust a wet behind the ears lawyer with only three trials under his belt? Never. W what? My case is near hopeless, right? Every defense attorney I've talked to has turned me down. What? Simply put, they were afraid they'd lose. It occurred to me that it might be my fault that they lack confidence. After all, I did get every single one of their clients declared guilty. Funnily enough, if I heard correctly, that's actually something that's kind of uh, true-ish when it comes to, like, a Japanese law scene. As, if I remember correctly, there was a Japanese law, like, defense lawyer who was famous for winning five cases. Ever. Because, according to what I heard, the, def like whole judicial scene in Japan is the prosecution really goes after ones that they f are really fairly certain they can convict. Whether they think it or not, think they are actually guilty, it's just like, hey, everything points to them being guilty, we'll go after them, it's a sure case kind of thing. So there really isn't that much, like, wiggle room for defense attorneys down there from what I hear, so yeah, I could see it. And at the same time, again, this is Mr. I have never not gotten someone convicted guilty until I ran up to Phoenix Wright, so. I don't believe it. Regardless, I don't want you involved in this. You in particular, I cannot ask to do this. 
Edgeworth. This is really hard for me to ask, but you didn't do it, right? Right? Think what you will. I have only one request. Huh? Stay out of the case. Why? But, but Nick is trying to help you! I know! I know that! But I don't want your help, okay? Why not? Look, just go away and leave me alone. Nick, Mr. Edgeworth did it, didn't he? Maya, let's go investigate elsewhere. But Nick... He can't have done it. He's too good a guy. Is it true? No one will take Mr. Edgeworth's case? Yeah. He's a bit of a celebrity. If you defended him and lost your reputation to be sure to suffer. What's more, the case against him is, well, it's pretty solid. I suppose it would be if they have a witness. Hey, pal! Don't tell me you're gonna turn your back on him, too! Remember the Steel Samurai case? Mr. Edgeworth helped you get your client declared innocent! I know. I went to Edgeworth, I tried. He really doesn't want us to represent him. Especially not us, he said. What? Well, that doesn't make any sense, pal! You should have heard him talking about you after that trial! He kept saying, right, 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 over and over! Nick? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Neither am I. Why wouldn't he want your help? I don't get it. Detective Gumshoe, sir! What? Find something! Um, no, sir, not yet. But there was a call from the precinct. They want to hold an investigation briefing. A briefing? Right, I'm off. Oh. Sorry, pal. I guess you heard. I gotta go. Any last things you want to ask, ask me before I head back? Hmm. Well, do you have the autopsy report? Well, yes. Do you have the, any information on the victim? Sorry. They haven't worked up the autopsy report yet. I'm still waiting for it myself. Actually, say, if you get the time, drop by the precinct. We can talk more there, pal. You're not coming back, detective? Um, probably not, pal. So, what should we do if we have something to talk to you about? All right. Here, I'll show you how to get to the precinct. Come down and see me anytime. I like Gumshoe. He's a nice guy. Directions to the police station received. Oh, hey, Detective Gumshoe. W what? Um, we'd like to take a look around the park. Can we walk around? Yeah, no problem, pal. You've got my permission. You know, Nick, I think there's something to be said for talking to people when they're busy. <laughs> Yeah, they don't have time to think about not giving you information. Right, now let's get investigating. That doesn't seem to be much to really... Oh, let's investigate the trees. I feel winter's chill from the bare leaf trees today. <sighs> what is it about winter that turns people into poets? I don't know, but my toes are starting to feel numb. Yes, my poetry has an effect on some people. I don't think that's what she was talking about, Nick. The sign says, Gord Lake Nature Park. This place is full of families picnicking on the weekend. But, no waterfall. Not many picnickers come here for spiritual training, Maya. <laughs> I like Maya. Maya's a nice character. Well, let's go to Gord Lake Public Beach. Samurai dogs. Interesting. Gord Lake Public Beach. Wowzers! This is Gord Lake? Yep. I'm not sure it warrants a wowzers, though. Hmm, probably not. But hey, look at that snack stand. Samurai dogs? I want a samurai dog, please. I bet they're great. With a name like Samurai Dog, how could they not be? They're a little behind the times, though. The kids are all into the pink princess now. I mean, like, you know? Nope. Let's see. The trash can is empty. At least the place is well maintained. Except for these, uh, like hats. Huh. Someone left some poppers here. You know, you pull the string, and it goes pop. Yeah, I know the ones. You see them a lot around New Year's. Hey, Nick, they might be a clue. Let's take them. Come on, admit it. You just want to pop them, right? Was it that obvious? Poppers, hmm? I mean, why not? Maybe, maybe somebody used a popper to fake a gunshot and framed Edgeworth. Who knows? Granted, the poppers might be here for a legitimate reason. Huh? Where'd they go? Into my pocket. <laughs> I guess she would have taken them whether we wanted to or not. <laughs> wow, 
Wow, Gourd Lake is really big. Yeah. Say, Nick, why is it called Gourd Lake? Oh, well, a long time ago, they used to grow gourds here. Wow, no way! I was sure it was because the lake looked like a gourd when viewed from above. You know, like an hourglass shape? Well, it is shaped like a gourd, actually, but that's just a coincidence. Oh, okay. Interesting. The hot dog stand, it's closed. The Christmas fringe looks a little half-baked. The banner reads Samurai Dogs. Somebody needs to redecorate. We can't even read what it says there. Well, let's see. Anything else? A lineup of plastic benches. I guess the idea is that you buy a hot dog and eat it here. I doubt anyone would sit here and eat on a day like this. Except maybe Maya, if she had a samurai dog. Huh. I almost didn't see the signpost. Left boat docks, right exit. Can we go get a boat, Mr. Wright? Well, we can go. Let's go to the boat rental shop. December 25th, boat rental shop. Nick, what is this place? A boat rental shop. Closed for Christmas, it seems. I guess a murder taking place on one of the boats won't be good for business either. Boats. I've never ridden on a boat. Really? Well, how about we go out on one when the trial's finished? Hey, good idea! You bet! Is it locked? Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They'll probably close because it's Christmas. Or the murder. There's some boats floating at the dock. Was one of these boats used in the murder, I wonder? Nick? Huh? I changed my mind. I don't really want to go for a boat ride. Hey, Nick, I don't want to die on a boat. <laughs> There's more forest off that way. I doubt I'd find any helpful clues there. Well, back to Gord Lake normal place. And then we can go to the Gord Lake Woods. Ah, camera. Gord Lake Woods. No camping. And then there's a whole, like, campsite set up. I like it here, Nick. Look, someone's camping at the no camping spot. Yeah, that's what I said. They've got guts camping at the scene of the murder and the no camping sign. Hey, hey, Nick, if they were camping here last night, they might know something about the murder. That's true. Good call, Maya. Let's go talk to him. Well, first, what's cooking? Hey, Nick. What? Don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no. I was just wondering, why are camping pots and pans made of aluminum? They didn't talk about that in any of the law books. <laughs> so there's no law saying they have to be made out of aluminum, then. Deductive reasoning. I'm not having this conversation. This SUV has b seen better days. It's dented all over. I can't believe anyone would drive their car down here. No camping sign. The sign says no camping. Funny place to pick your <laughs> pinch your tent. Wait, what if the sign says no setting tents on fire? What? I don't think they have signs like that. Oh. There's food and some magazines on the sheet. It takes a pretty tough skin to camp in the cold like this. Can't even look at the lake from this angle, but we can look at this camera. This camera has a mic and some sort of attachment. It must take pictures when triggered by a noise. Wow, cool! Let's try it out! <coughs> hey, I'm Nick! Hi, I'm Nick! Maybe I'm not saying it loud enough. Hey, I'm Nick! Huh. <laughs> Nick! Will you stop that? Maybe it's broken. Don't kick it! Maybe it isn't set to respond to voices. Well, what then? These things? The party poppers. <laughs> Inter interesting. <laughs> Why is it set to specifically sound off at a at a big pop? Hmm. Well, it responded. Yeah! Hey, you! Get your hands off of that! Once again, eek. What in the Sam Hill? Look what you've done now! There goes a whole roll of film. Uh, what? Sorry, it's not <laughs> nice, but don't pay my bills. Y'all know how much a roll of that film costs? It is true. Physical film is pretty expensive. Especially back in 2001. Uh, I'll pay you back. What were y'all thinking it's enough a party popper in a place like this? Uh, well... What? Don't try to play stupid with me just because you think I'm some country bumpkin. You think I'm... Yeah, I know how y'all y yanks think. I see those southern folks talk with that exaggerated drawl. Why, they must be dumb. Well, let me tell y'all, just because I might be dumb to me. 
That is an amusing line. And, uh, great self-awareness, miss. Nick, help! And who are you now? Who chaperone? Yeah, uh, no, rather, uh, we're sort of friends. Just figure, figure out what y'all are gonna say and say it for, for Jesus' sake. God, I'd rather sit through one of Papa's draws than listen to you stutter all day. Oh boy, I guess we should pay her for the film. Watch it! Yes, ma'am. <laughs> On second thought, I'll pay later. I'm really sorry. Well, uh, who are you? Um, what? Can't you see I'm changing the film on my camera here? Someone I'm not naming any names, but someone used up a whole roll! Sorry, that didn't work. I wonder if I have anything to show that would get her attention. I'm a lawyer! I, uh, this is my badge. Huh? Aren't badges supposed to be all shiny and impressive? You a cop or something? Um, I'm a lawyer. What? Y'all ain't gonna try and pull one of them lawsuits on me over that film now, because I'll have y'all know I'm a fighter and I wrestled meaner-looking things in you. No, that's not it at all. We're here investigating a murder that took place here on the lake. A murder? Sounds cool. Why didn't y'all say that in the first place? Go ahead, ask me anything you like. Finally, some cooperation. All it took was a murder. <laughs> you too. Y'all can come out of hiding now. I won't bite hard. Come to think of it, where did Maya get to? Sorry, I was feeling a little overwhelmed. The culture gap and all. <laughs> Never you mind, honey. I can talk yank for you if, uh, <laughs> if it pleases you. Thanks. I think I'll be okay. Right then, I'm Lotta. Lotta Hart. I'm going to assume that, that she's a good person then. She has a lot of heart, as it were. But y'all can call me Lotta. I'm here photographing, I'm here photographing meteor showers for a research project. Mighty pleased to meet you. Alright. Lada. So, what is it you do, Lada? Huh? Me? <laughs> Y'all don't really want to know that, do you? Actually, I'm a research student at Country U, right in the heart of the heartland. Wow, neat! Nick, she's a research student at a university, Country U. Uh, so I hear. So, when did you come up here? Uh, let me see. I guess it was about three days ago. What are you photog photographing? I don't know why my brain wants to say photographing. Even though that just doesn't roll off the tongue nicely. Photographing. D didn't I tell y'all that already? Meteors! Yep, meteor showers. Falling stars? She's probably here for Gordy. Oh yeah, when was that murder anyway? I ain't seen much television lately. It happened late in the night on Christmas Eve. That's so. Christmas Eve? A man on a boat was shot. Did you see anything? Well, let me see. A boat, you say? I reckon I might have seen one. Not sure, though. Y'all gotta remember I've been watching this here lake for a good three days now. I've seen enough boats to choke a mule. Kinda hard to remember which one I've seen. Hmm. How about the camera? That's quite a camera you have there. Y'all better know it. It's German-made. A genuine s uh, Solingen? Isn't that where they make knives? Um... So, what's that device you have stuck to the camera? Huh? Device? Your camera went off all by itself when I fired my party popper. Actually, come to think of it... Yeah, it has to be Gordy because meteors don't make noises. Especially because... Unless it's tuned to a specific frequency or some such, it has to be for that, like, a very specific range of noises that includes a, a gunshot kind of noise, a big pop. Or maybe it's just the game's way of rendering the party popper just sounds like a gunshot, I don't know. But yeah, I think murder is on those films. Oh, that, that mic triggers the shutter whenever it detects certain sounds. It's programmed to pick up loud noises right now. A programmable camera, neat. Set to automatically take a picture when a loud noise is detected, faces the lake. Can I present it to her? Lana? Yeah? So your camera, it triggers on loud explosion noises. Yep. Actually, the victim in the case we're researching, he was shot with a pistol. A pistol? Right. Now, wouldn't a gunshot make a similar noise to our party popper? Called it. I guess it would. Your camera didn't get a picture of the murder, did it? Hey, y'all are pretty bright. Huh? I see what you're saying. Tell you what, I'll have a look-see at my film. It would have been a photo taken late last night. I checked him once. Don't remember if there was anything on him, though. But what if I got something? I 
could be a witness to a genuine murder. Yeehaw! I'll go check that film. Y'all come back now, you hear? She went inside her SUV. I guess we should come back later. Well, uh, at least we did the right thing. I figured, hey, wouldn't there be something some such going on? Let's check the boat rental shop just in case. Nope, nothing new. I just figured, maybe. You never know how things move in this game. Well, I guess next would be the criminal affairs department. What is that weird, creepy gremlin on the right there? December 25th, Police Department Criminal Affairs. I guess Detective Gumshoe is still in that meeting. Hey! Thanks for coming down, pal! Detective Gumshoe! We just finished the meeting. For better or for worse. I get the feeling we're in for some bad news. The victim. Do you know anything about the victim yet? Oh no, still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. How about the meeting? How did the meeting go? I can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth's human like you and me. Still, I get the feeling that if he'd done something wrong, he wouldn't go and hide in it. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So we think Mr. Edgeworth did it? Well, the trial starting tomorrow is scheduled. I see. Um... Hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand by Mr. Edgeworth. He needs help, and you're the ones to help him. I'm sure he's got reasons why he won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Hmm, well, first, I just... Can I present camera? Sorry, I'm drawing a blank right now. That one's very fast. Well, trusting Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe, how can you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that was obvious. We got a strong working relationship, us two. We trust each other, and that's how it works. A working relationship? See, Mr. Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty every time. Yeah, his methods might be a little extreme at times, but there's no, there's a reason. He trusts our investigation, see? He trusts us to get at the right man. That's why I work extra hard, pal. We've got to earn that trust he places in us. That trust that you are now betraying, technically. Mr. Edgeworth is a man you can trust. And you have my word on that. How about an autopsy report? I was wondering, did you ever get that autopsy report? Oh, that? Yeah, I made a copy for you. Time of death sometime on the 24th or 25th. Cause one bullet to the heart. Thank you. Nick? Huh? Can you show me that photo of the victim? They got a photo. I've never seen him before. That face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I met him somewhere a long time ago. So we... Oh, <laughs> we don't even have a picture of him. Well, I guess we shall head back to Gord Lake. I suppose. And if there's nothing there, we will then head back to the detention center. Ah, progress. Hey, y'all. Lada. Wait up a sec. We got bingo. Bingo? My automatic camera took two pictures last night. Hey. This is them. Take a look. <laughs> I love how kind of... Well, it is kind of meant to give off the feeling of Loch Ness Monster, so that works. Wait, see? See? He's shooting him with that pistol! It looks like that, yeah. But you can't really tell who, is, who, is, who that is shooting, or whatever. My brain is burning. Yeah, well, there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog. But you know, seeing these photos reminded me of something. What? I saw the murder happen. I'm a witness! What? Uh, are you serious? Of course. How do you forget? Never mind. Y'all reckon I should tell the cops? <laughs> I reckon so. I reckon no. I love this game. I reckon so. I reckon so. What's that? Now don't y'all trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. 
Y'all can have this photo. Later. Well, wait, Lada. What? Can't you see I'm kind of busy? Tell us what you saw too, please. Nice try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness, and that means I'm on the side of justice, and that means the cops. Yeah, sadly, a lot of people take that stance. I'd sooner eat the south side of a northbound skunk than tell you. Lada. Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. I don't think that's a good saying. Was that the other way around? Nah, no matter. I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. Ah, darn. I will crush you on the stand. She left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out in the trial tomorrow. Lake photo added to the court record. Well, let's examine the camera just one more time for fun. An expensive looking camera faces the lake. Next to it is a large microphone and a blue plastic sheet. Hmm, looks like a computer is attached to the camera. Makes sense. I guess that's for the microphone and hooking it up to the camera, but it still uses film. Well, I guess now, unless some- Ah, something's happening at the hot dog stand. Will the Samurai Burger Man come out to play? Looks like the police have given up their, uh, their interviewing. Hey! Oh, it's Santa Claus. Ah! Nick, I think Santa's mad at you! Long time no see, Nick. Nick, you know Santa? Wow, Nick and Saint Nick. Hey, I see the connection. Don't be ridiculous. Dude, it's me. L Larry? What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm working my day job. I sell samurai dogs. Want one? Gotta get money for dates, you know. <coughs> ah, excuse me. My girl, Kianse, deserves the best. Kianse? Not another model, I hope. Oh, Kianse's a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear this costume. She was all, you go, girlfriend, you know? She bought this costume for me. That, that's great, Larry. Wow, a Santa costume. She must be really nice. Well, cute. Nick, who's she? She's not your, not my, what? No, she's not. I'm his partner, Maya Faye. I'm, uh, the little sister. Sister? Wow, Nick, must be tough. Working nine to five, having to take care of a little sister. N no, I'm not Nick's sister, I'm my older sister's little sister. Ha, <laughs> sounds great. Don't worry, Maya, he's not listening. Well, did... Let's talk about samurai dogs, I guess. Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I, I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. Ah, uh, well, originally they were gourd dogs, you know, like guard dogs. Ouch. <laughs> the samurai thing was Kianse's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know. She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made, she made me that banner. You know, not a half bad banner, all things considered. Man, the kids can't get enough of these samurai dogs. Um, something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. Well, the big news. The big news? Yeah, Gordy. G Gordy? Well, let's talk about Gordy. Um, what's Gordy? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here at this very lake, a giant mysterious monster. Gordy! A monster? Yeah, check it out. This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. There's a photo. Wow, it's really real. Huh. That's actually quite clear. Also, soulless eyes. But that has to be something specific. So it's not an actual monster, but I wonder what it is, is. Hmm. <laughs> what? Why is that, like, A, at the far right, just so much big and clearer compared to everything else that amuses me? Nick, a monster, a real monster! Um, yeah, probably just a log or something, right? Hey, there's a quote here from the person who took the photo. Hmm, what's this? I set the camera to automatic and when we got into the frame, I heard a loud bang like an explosion, followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, can I borrow this article from you? 
Sure, no problem. That'll be one million dollars. One million? Grow up, Larry. <laughs> Gordy article added to the court record. Well, what happened? Hey, Larry, there was a murder here last night. And since you work here, have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Kianse, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oof! I think what you just said caught him off guard, Maya. No, it's just... Kianse's not in town right now. She, she's in Hawaii on a photo shoot. A model. I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Ha! <laughs> Neat. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Oh, Nick! You don't mean that Miles Edgeworth? Old Edgy? <laughs> I'm amused by the, <laughs> by the nickname. Yeah, he's a murder suspect. Whoa! Murder? Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course! Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? Well, Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Yeah, Nick, him and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he's always been kind of a stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, Edgy's pop was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Oof! That has to have something to do with his I have to get everyone declared guilty, I assume. Wow, wait. You said defense lawyer? Yeah. Wait a second. But Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgy's got a proboscis on his knee? No, he's a prosecuting attorney. It's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Huh. Go figure. He always used to talk about defending the weak who were unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on and on about man's duty to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know Nick? Nick? Well, that that adds some some something to something. <laughs> Definitely makes a uh, poor edgy edgy edgier. And nope, nothing at the boat rentals just yet. Nothing else. Let's then, I guess, head to the entrance. And then I guess to the detention center. And he's not here. Darn. And I guess the criminal affairs department. I wonder what more we will learn. Will we learn the guy's identity? Also, these are some old ass computers. Uh, granted, there's like a, a kind of decent looking laptop. But all of these computers look odd. Oh, I forgot to check, actually examine the gremlin monster. Time to examine the gremlin monster. Not a gumshoe in sight. If you're looking for Detective Gumshoe, he's in the questioning room. Apparently an important witness turned up. He'll be in, in there for a while. A lot of heart. It has to be. Uh-oh. Let's look at the gremlin. Hey, is that the police department's mascot? That's the Blue Badger. It was my idea. I made it. It's my mascot. I see. How nice. I'll get him a signed mascot of the Criminal Affairs Department. It's the last thing I do. Um, good luck. This must be the chief of the detectives there. He's glued to his computer screen. What? Gord Lake. Gord decided. I don't believe it. Shouldn't you be reading something more important? These are the detectives' desks. There are computers and files on each one. Funny, they're a lot tighter than I expected. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. Ouch. That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to himself. Move in the crowd. Wear drab clothes. Never enter the target's field of vision. He must be doing image training for trailing. Or he's gonna become an assassin. Well, there's nothing here. Maybe the detention center. Nope. Then I guess we go back to Gord Lake. But what would be at Gord Lake? Do we have anything? Or would you like this? What's this? You know, my eyes have been getting pretty bad lately, Nick. Actually, the photo's blurry, Larry. 
It was taken last night. Last night? Do you know the dead man? Hey, Larry, you know this guy? Who's this? I don't know. That's why I ask you. Who's this, Maya? Well, wait. Maya said she had seen him before, didn't she? Camera. What's that? It's a camera. You take pictures with it. Huh. But Larry, you mean you don't know what a camera is? Of course I know. Hey, you're looking at a bona fide junior high graduate. I was talking about the weird contraption on the camera. Oh, that. Well, it's hard to explain. Just forget it. Well, don't just go showing it to me then. Jeez. I do feel like we're kind of <laughs> hurting the poor boy. Well, I, I assume not. Then let's go back to this. Is Well, a lot is not here. And nothing else seems to change. Let's look at the woods. The trees grow quite thick here. For the back, the trees fade into the shadows where the sunlight can't reach them. Disturbing. And again, it's doing that thing where there's... Some have leaves and others are just completely barren. Hmm. Well... I guess we go back to our... Diddly -de -de departments of our own, our law offices. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey! I remember now! This guy! He's a lawyer that was at that office Mia worked at. Ah! Mr. Ahem! Big painting dude. I met him once when I went there to hang out with Sis. That, that office? Wait! You mean Grossberg's office? Right, that guy! That was the last name I expected to come up. Maybe I should go talk to him, for old time's sake. Considering the dude might be dead, and then we can go and actually, like, say, hey, we know who's dead now. Mahim! Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Maha, <laughs> you're Mia's something, are you not? I was, uh, I was her understudy, yes, Phoenix Wright. Maha, <laughs> you're uh, Mia's something too, are you not? Her little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. It takes me back. Ah, uh, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh linen. Um, uh, Mr. Grossberg, sir. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, yes. I beg your pardon. Of course, you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something the matter? Can we talk about that painting yet, Mr. Grossberg? What happened to that painting? Oh yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. I can't exactly claim it as stolen. I suppose it's my just desserts. Old, bitter desserts. Ah, at least that's kind of... I like that they kept that, like, line of diddly d in. I don't know. I just, I like it. There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I uh, just got up, you see. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? H who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. This is terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. Well, let's first show him. Gordy. Uh, my apologies. I'm not sure I can help you with that. The picture? So this is the moment the crime took place, eh? Yes. You can't really say for sure that's Edgeworth. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Not sure at all. Strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Ah! Did you remember? He was a lawyer here in my office. That's Hammond, Robert Hammond. Mr. Hammond? And you say this is the man Miles Edwards shot? Well, let's talk about Hammond. Who is this Hammond guy anyway? Mr. Hammond. He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes. The DL6 incident. DL6? Why does that sound so familiar? Perhaps you remember? I'm not sure. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Wait. You don't mean... Is that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. That spirit medium, Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the spirit of the victim. But the case was a loss. No conviction was made. The L6 incident. 
The DL6 incident, yes, happened 15 years ago. A very strange case indeed. You know, Mia has very good memory if she remembered a defense attorney from 15 years ago that she probably met like once. They never caught the criminal. Oh, completely wrong, wrong character there. They never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to charges being laid against one man. But Mr. Hammond won the case, and the suspect was declared innocent. <laughs> innocent. And the police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out then, right, Mr. Crosberg? Uh, yes. Yes, quite. Thank you. No, please. Don't mention it. DL6. I never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait. What does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory Edgeworth. What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait, this is a photograph of my mother. Misty Fay's photo added to the court record. Well, off to the detention center we go. Hey, edgy boy. We have intense conversationals. What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone. Uh, that probably won't change much. We have a photo. Hmm. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, Ry? I don't think you're the kind of I need to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. I'm sorry, I can't think of anything I want to say about that. Fair enough. How about Gordy? What's that? I'm not in the mood for idle banter, right? Well, how about this idle banter? Edgeworth? It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited. Yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it. I'm impressed, right? You're always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? About the DL6 incident. Right. DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. And that is why I refused off your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job, even though that was your main argument at first. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like and I will answer to the best of my abilities. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Oh, that's gruesome! Right before my eyes. He was shot and killed and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond... Oh, and Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium. That was my mom. What? You mean your... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end. And now, this. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. Fifteen years on December 28th. Well, we know this case is going to go all three rounds of days anyway, so it's going to come full, full circle. Oh, boy. December 28th? And the statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. I don't think that's how it works. Oh, well, uh, technically, but... Yeah, I suppose... Technically... Because, at least in America, the way Statute of Limitations works is, like, 
the th the ca like the crime has to be known, I think. Maybe. I don't know. But I wonder if there's like something about this because they arrested someone, tried someone, and then failed to convict someone that the crime itself still went on, but you'd think that they would have to, I don't know. Law systems are weird, especially in this world where they're like, no, the case can only last three days, then it has to be determined. Crazy world. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of limitations runs out, legally, the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed. Forever. The suspect. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where's to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Your father. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. I'd rather not talk about that. Right? It pains me to ask you this now. I know! You want us to defend you! Yes. Will you? Of course we will! Ah, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh. My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. Document proving your e proving Edgeworth's request for an attorney. Well, I guess we should. What's that? An earthquake! Nick! It's a big one! Wah! It's calming down? Ooh, that was scary! Huh? Where's Edgeworth? Did he <laughs> fall, drop, and roll? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well on earthquakes. I wonder if that has to do with uh, that defense mechanism. Maybe PTSD? I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. The stretch work doesn't seem like he's gonna stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. Very mean of that there man to just stand there, not helping <laughs> the poor, poor man who's curled up in a ball in front of him. What's going on here? Yeah. What's wrong, Detective? Clearly one of the best cases of the trilogy. I hope so. It's very much been built up to. This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Lot of heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give Mr. Edgeworth the death sentence, pal? D no, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you're trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir! Well, first things first, I am Lawyer Man. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal! Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, Detective. I'll see you in court tomorrow, then. Good luck, pal. Hey! You guys feel that earthquake a little while back. I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. All right. He did seem to overreact a little, now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big earthquake. I'm gonna go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later! Probably should have talked to him first before I gave him the diddly deep, but oh well. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Are we gonna see Flashback Edgeworth? And again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. No flashback to young Edgy. But detectiving is over. I guess now we head on over to hell. Where we have to pick apart some testimonies. December 26th. 
944, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Karma? That's right, Manfred Mavon Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me multiplied by a factor of ten. Uh, so he was... So was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. Now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep! Oh wait, maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out! Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me times 20! That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Uh, Maya? Uh-huh. You could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried. I really tried. But I couldn't reach. I guess she really needed that waterfall. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. I knew it. <laughs> My powers are weak again. Granted, uh, I wonder because... Man, I guess they've just grown weaker because back in the second trial when Mia first uh, manifested, she did say that Maya's powers were weak, but I, I guess they've grown weaker. Darn. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. Well, on the one hand, we won't have Ghost Machina this time. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Let's enjoy the Hell Zone. Also, I just realized Manfred von Karma has gotten guilty verdicts on all of his cases, including the, what, 37 years that they didn't have the fast super pass guilty verdict initiative? Oh boy. What? Why does von Karma look so wonky drawn like that? I like it. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? Right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident, now. Yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the middle of the, in the very middle of the lake, even though that doesn't look like the middle, but there. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m., she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Two shots, you say? Hmm. Overhead map added to the court record. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. <laughs> Wags his hand. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. 
Yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not! The arrest of Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, but the next morning a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. I see very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! <laughs> the judge just doesn't say anything. This karma guy is scary. Well, let's press. Get any information we can. You received a call from a man. Uh, yeah. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? <laughs> That's a deep voice for an objection. That woman and the man who called in to report are two different people, obviously different people. There were two witnesses. Uh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping? Lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Edgeworth. What was he doing there? What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well... From what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, Detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. I'm sure is really the definition of a gentle giant. A bit stupid, but adorable. Indeed. Quite a nice man. Yes, sir. He's got his share of objections. Seems like he objects to everything I have, well, even, like, hold up. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, because he kind of went into that, but I was present just to be sure. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trust and relationship with the prosecutor. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep trusting poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Mm -hmm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue. Now! But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. Sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Tisk, tisk, tisk. Ah, he was the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found on the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order, order! So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accept it into evidence. All right, fired three times. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Tisk. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. Uh, me? Um, hmm. 
ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The bell leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order! Order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge, I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, you wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge! Miss! What are you doing? A ten-minute recess. Now! B but wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man! Yes! <laughs> He's such a terrifying guy. <clears throat> This court will take a ten-minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? All right. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Uh. Mm. That foggy photo makes one thing clear: the only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Is that you in the boat? Yes. It was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then, the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Huh? What? Any progress of Mia? Oh, sorry. It's no good. Uh, I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. You are of some moral support, at least. No, of course I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? And occasionally, you do throw out something that's a really big help, so hey. It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Uh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck's gonna run out. That feels... that feels very, very bad. That feels like foreshadowing. Really? Whoa, right! Don't jinx this case any more than it already is! It's bad for my heart. Oh, oh, sorry. Whoops. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at the university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or a subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. <laughs> understand? Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Before we go into the testimony, I want to quickly go over... The facts as we currently know them. Okay, so Edgeworth was on a boat, and it was taken at 12.15. Time of death sometime on the 24th or 25th. Hmm. But they said that there were two gunshots, but this has been fired three times. That's what's making me feel odd. He's been fired three times. We have one bullet, but they specifically said that 
two bullets were, like, two gunshots were sounded that night, which activated the camera, and it took two pictures. And this is just one of them. Hmm. Welp, uh, let's get on with it. Witnesses account. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gins on a boat. Wouldn't have, uh, the guy had fallen at that point if they... Because it would take you a bit to get out of your car, kind of run up to get a good view, and plus it was very foggy. It was very foggy. When I looked out of the window, I s Oh, when you looked out the window. Me jumping the gun. But that still remains that a gunshot was sounded, and they were standing on the boat. If he was shot, then wouldn't he have fallen out by then? Then there was another bang. There was an area thing on the lake but that boat. Minoff. Huh? Judge. She has happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accept it as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. But there were two bangs, but only one bullet. Order, I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked out at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake, so the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order, order, order! I will have order! Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court's find the defendant. Wait, Your Honor! I haven't cross-examined the witness yet! The cross-examination... We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? One bullet, two bangs, three gunshots. Very mysterious. That's what I'm saying. This photo is worth a thousand words. And they all read guilty. You lose, or do you claim to have found a contradiction? in her testimony. Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. A uh, nip, nick, contempt? Contempt of court, you know? I guess I understand. What are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction? I think there was. Again, one bullet, two bangs, three gunshot. Well, three bullets fired, two bangs heard, one bullet found. I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, Nick, I'm impressed. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I'll cross-examine the witness. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Christmas Eve, that just after midnight, I reckon. Do you have any decisiveness to this? Just after midnight, you say? In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Uh, yeah, well, yes. I know you want to find contradictions, but really. Uh, I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. I was in my car, understandable. I heard this bang come from the lake. What? Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture, clear enough for you? Uh-oh. Press further. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. 
Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. He's covering that one, too. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright, not meaningless babble. Von Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? Need more. Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. Let's press further, though. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Hmm. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained! Yes, of course. Oh, great. What am I supposed to do now? There weren't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. If only my sister were here. I was really taking this hard. So I have to use evidence. But what should I use? Hmm. Heard this bang. But there's only one bullet, so I don't know which evidence to present. <laughs> that deep objection is a bit creepy. Indeed it is. I'm just trying to wonder what it is that I'm supposed to give as evidence for this one. Hmm. Because maybe... Because hmm. that's the problem, is my brain gets wrapped up in, like super specifics so when it comes to like this my brain is just like I think it's this one single thing and it just keeps running that again and again so I might be ignoring something I don't think it's the photo I think it has to do with the fact that there are two bangs so nope I failed this one nope because I want to say that she heard two bangs but she only is saying that she... Hmm, there were two bangs, but there's only one bullet. Maybe this is where I need to do it. Then, there, then it was this one. Blah. But again, I don't know. Is it the photo? Is it the gun? Is it the bullet? This is the one part that wraps my brain terribly of these games. Nope. Darn it. Because I'm fairly certain that it is that one. I'm just trying to find out this one. Because I've heard this bang, looked out, then there was another bang. I just want to know which one it is. Because, hmm. yeah, there's that. Hmm. I wonder... If we're meant to present the camera and say, shouldn't there be two photos? Then. Because this is the part, there's so many interlocking pieces that you could all, like, raise a point to. But you need to find, like, the specific line with the specific evidence. And it doesn't help that all of these evidence relates to the bang. Dang it. I'm just trying to figure out that one. Hmm. Unless I'm supposed to, like, press more, but I don't think I am. It's possible that I, like... Hmm. Because I didn't press on this one, but I don't think it would provide anything. Because on Christmas Eve, we already uh, pressed on that. I don't think the I was in my car, but maybe. It was late at night, so maybe? Might as well. Why were you camping out there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? How dare you? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait, now I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. 
Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Or maybe this was one where I was supposed to run it out, actually. Seems you're unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But there were ones. You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood. Uh-huh. Nick, Lada's testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but I can't say anything. What can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who said hold it? Wh who was that? Oh, it was me. Maya! There's something wrong. D do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. A lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death! Lada! Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outbursts. Answer me, Lada! What's the big idea treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear, I saw Edgeworth! Enough! Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of must leave. No. No! Ah, we actually get escorted out. Wait! I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Man, I'm gonna lose my only friend in here. Ha! What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong! Wrong! What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony! That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again! So even though my poor assistant got held in contempt, at least I get some extra chances. Order! 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 You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotterheart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he's in contempt of court! No, I am! If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me! Mm. Very well. Maya Faye, you will leave the courtroom immediately. The judge finally doing his job? Yep. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. But Maya! And now I am alone with Satan. Pah, I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witness. I'm running out of time. Better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. I saw it clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not even gonna do... Well, let's go ahead and press, because it doesn't hurt, and maybe the game wants that. Well, what about the other man? You cannot be expected to be allowed to blindly ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claim there was a contradiction. We'll find it, if you can. Well, Mr. Wright, I have to assign you a penalty. Ah, oh, come on. That's rude. Uh-oh. I don't know if I can find anything in that. But I can't squander Maya's efforts, either. Very rude. I wasn't. Take this, jerk. Got you. Got you, Miss Hart, finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph of agony. The photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So, so? This picture was taken with a professional high quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim to have saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? 
Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony, please! Yet now she has said it, this Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself! Miss Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course, I said I could and I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. You're right, it was cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out in the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See, no problem. Hmm, you used binoculars. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. Better save. Because apparently using the systems, the game will be like, ah, how dare you. Be careful. Because Karma's gonna try and lame me out. Alright. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars! Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. You can't say that for certain. Mr. Wright, is the camera really relevant to the case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. I believe it is. But know this. If you find nothing but this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? Yes, mainly because it is a camera tied to a microphone. Media showers don't make noise. This makes it or breaks it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. When I heard the noise, so the lake... So obviously, maybe I should press on that, but let's see. Yeah, I'm not gonna risk it. You are photographing shooting stars. That's a lie. S says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upward to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Take that! Gordy. Miss Hart, this is what you are trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. I have proof. I have it. Proof. Hmm, intriguing. Very well, let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. What proof that the witness was trying to take? It was the camera. The proof here is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus the photograph here taken when a gunshot, a gun fired on the lake. And here this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you would set up your camera to respond to loud noises. Granted, I could s I'm surprised Karma hasn't come out to say, Well, what does this have to do with the murder? I'm honestly surprised. Order! Order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart, you were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah, not bad, all you lawyers that smart. So smart, boy, I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? 
Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But as she succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason. I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine, I'll testify. I won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm gonna spot it. This is a very stressful court case. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked that uh, straight out of the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of, of men's. I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at the boat the whole time. Crossed my heart and hoped to fry. I think that another gunshot will help. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Karma's up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because why? Was there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Ha. Ah, that would be a thirst. Phoenix is just having his best luck cross-examining and Von Karma is such a killzoy. Exactly! You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright? If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. It has to be the another gunshot. The thing that I wanted to point out this entire time! I wanted to say it this entire time! How can there be two gunshots if there's only one bullet? And how do we know that it shot three times? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Another gunshot. Was there nothing on the lake but the boat at that time? Huh? Wait, so you're thinking maybe he was shot from some other place? I don't think so, nope. The lake was smooth as glass and nobody was on the shore neither. Hmm, I'd better find some sort of contradiction in this testimony. I won't be able to beat Von Karma the other way. There has to be something. Because it has to be this one. The another gunshot. Darn! Again, I don't know which one to say because... Is it the gun because it shot three times? Because again, that's the one thing that I want to point out. Another bang. Then shouldn't there be two photos? Shouldn't there be two bullets? It has to be the another bang, right? Or does, does the game want me to like, press further on other things, despite the fact that it punished me when I did that last. Hmm. Well, let's press on this as it seems to be a bit pertinent. Is Gordy really all that newsworthy? Heck yeah! They even had him up on the TV! I'm not sure that appearing on the local news a rumor of the month segment qualifies. Last month's segment was Bigfoot sighted on Acorn Hill, I believe. Hey! They also had a new picture of him in the newspaper, for real! Mr. Wright, this is one of the fight I do not believe you can win. Let's keep moving, shall we? Yes, Your Honor. I have to investigate the two bangs. Exactly what sort of sound was it? Well, I never heard one before, so I can't say for sure, but it sounded like a gunshot. It was a lot sharper sound than I would have expected. Press this, because if there was one, there wasn't much else to look at. Yep. I don't know. She had a bang, and she thought Gordy was out there. I kind of doubt she'd waste time looking at that bow. What? What do I do now? What are you giving me that look for? 
Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Witness continue. Hold your hush puppies, Pops. I'm getting there. So it's actually this one. So should I cite the... Again, this is the one issue with the Phoenix Wright like game so far is that there are times where it feels like there are other pieces of evidence, this time especially, where it's just like, we know three bullets, three, three gun fired three times, one bullet found, but two bangs were heard. If that's all true, maybe Gordy article? You wouldn't be looking at the boat because you would be looking for Gordy. I guess that's what it wanted me to hone in on. Miss Hart, were you really looking at that boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it, but you're not a normal person. I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy. That's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah! Order! Continue, Mr. Wright! You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Hmm. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake for a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? Yeah, you have to follow the logic of the game even though you're ten steps further. It's not even that, it's just like, I have this one thing, this one piece of evidence. I'm like, I know this has something to do. They mentioned another bang. There were two bangs. But I need to be more careful and actually focus on the line of ideas of the character. Like there, with Lot of Heart, she was there for Gordy, so I should have focused more on discrediting her by focusing on, yeah, like how she wouldn't look at the boat. She would be looking for Gordy at the sign of a loud bang. Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be a witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. But, but hey, you got the photograph. You got proof. Still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo in. Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Sh shut my what? What was she going to say? She took the photo in what? Wait a second. Two bangs, two photos. She even had a photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell from the photo who was shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of might, but it'll let us see who's who. She enlarged that photo. I won't find karma let her show it. I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong, though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth or worse. What should I do? Make her shard the enlargement. I don't think there's been a moment where waiting for uh, a witness to do something has actually been the right answer. Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place, you old fool! Thank you, Lada, for having lots of heart. What's the meaning of this, Von Karma? Uh, mm. Miss Hart. Show the photo to the court! Show us the enlargement! The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. It's his left hand, and they said it was his right hand. We still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept it as evidence. Lake photo added to the court record. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Um, there has to be something. You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. Mm. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Lotta Hart. 
And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. This is bad. Real bad. What should I do? Now, this is another thing where I don't know if object to the enlargement would do what I want it to. It could be I object to this being added as evidence. But, wait. Court record. Right hand. Show other evidence. Wait, your honor, this evidence. I believe we have spent enough time talking about the evidence. Indeed, we've heard opinions on every piece of evidence but this enlargement. I see no point in retracing our steps. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Well, I guess object to the enlargement because it doesn't want me to show other evidence. Your Honor, there's something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What might that be? Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, here goes nothing. I'll show the judge what's strange about this photo. This man is using his left hand to fire the gun. Meanwhile, it's the fingerprints from Edgewood's right hand that were on the gun. Here, your honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, your honor. The hand? The hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence it contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding the pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant? Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? <gasps> no, no, I couldn't. It couldn't have been Miss Hart. Well, I guess technically, but I don't know what the game. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't throw Larry under, could I? Could I? I don't know. Okay, let's try and follow the logic of the game the last time it had me do this. Okay, the last time it had me do this was when Miss Oldbag was being a witness. And they're like, but if it wasn't Will Powers and nobody else was there, who else could have been the samurai? And we said, ah, well, Miss Oldbags knew that he had an injury and could have gone through. And even though she didn't have a motive, neither did Will Powers. But well, it's just like here. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Because it's obvious that the gun is going off, so it can't be the victim himself. But what about Miss Hart? Hmm. She was being very, like, odd about it. But at the same time, she enlarged it, so I doubt... Hmm. I guess I could throw poor, poor Larry under the bus. I'm just trying to, like, think it through. The victim himself, could it have been? No, because specifically the photo that we just got, the enlarged photo, shows somebody else on the boat shooting a gun and there's the muzzle flash. Can't be. But would it make sense to throw Larry under the bus? Hmm. Or Miss Hart. Hmm. I'm just trying to think. 
in the precise logic of the game. Because I doubt it's the victim himself due to the fact that the photo exists. Miss Hart, though. Why would she set up a... Hmm. Though that would be an interesting thing. But we just set up that Miss Hart was there for the... Gordy. So while that would be an interesting thing to be like, Miss Hart was there and... Her setting up the sound-activated camera was part of some gambit or whatever. And uh, do I throw Larry under the... B I don't know. I don't know. All of them sound dumb. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Hmm. I mean, technically I have the, like, life to go through all three... Larry des just deserves being thrown under the bus. You're right, let's do it. Wait, wait, I can't do that. Sacrifice one of my friends to save another? What's the point? Well, write your answer. <laughs> but why not? <gasps> why shouldn't we? We threw old bag under the bus. And again, I don't think it's the victim himself one because of the photo. That is the main reason why I'm not selecting that. Because again, there's clearly somebody there shooting another man with a gun, and there's a muzzle flash. So I guess Miss Hart. Who else but the witness, Miss Lotta Hart? What, what? Do you have proof of this? Proof, schmoof. Always do, always have the proof. Oh wait, I do need proof, don't I? Mr. Wright, I'll have you remember this in a court of law. Uh oh. At least I had the health to be able to just brute force this section. Uh, again, why would that be the answer, though? There's the lake photo that shows a clearly different person, but oh well. There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Order! Order! So you are saying that the victim committed suicide? This case is cool, but tricky. Definitely. And considering that, considering that I got, like, hooked on the, like, T-bone steak problem in the last case, meh. I didn't even notice when Miss Vasquez said Mr. Hammer was the one with the injury and not Will Powers, because I am dumb. Yes, Your Honor, I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet! Pot of greed that allows you to pull two cards. There's no way it could have been suicide. But still, that just leaves us with a bunch of contradictions. Mr. Von Karma, are you sure about the accuracy of your data? Of course, I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Autopsy report updated. Of course, <laughs> because uh, if Edgeworth is the one that's like, ah, updated autopsy, why not his, his teacher? Hmm, I see. Very well, allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints of the gun revealed that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for the trial of the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. The court is adjourned. Basically, my main issue is I need to not get hooked up on, but I know it's this one thing. I have one contradiction that I want to point out right now. I need to stay in the moment and look over the facts of each witness and how they relate to the evidence before me. While, yes, admitting certain things like there are three shots from the gun, two bangs heard, and one bullet found, I need to look at it more precisely for each and everything. Meh. Uh, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. 
I was just kidding around. Hmm. Look, I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh. Right? What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thing, Sedgeworth? That's a game of patience. Indeed it is. I need to lay out the things that I know are wrong and could potentially be, as well as, like, when facing somebody like Lada, go, okay, here's the core tenets of Lada. She's a photographer. The thing was set to sound because she was there for Gordy. And there's, like, set up things to do. I requested a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood out was the bang she heard. The two bangs that I want to... Ooh, maybe this will allow me to be able to point out things. Like, ah, we only found one thing, but then what about the other things? Ah. But then again, this is just me, like, narrowing in on the thing again. <sighs> Alright, we'll continue a little bit, but we'll stop before the next trial portion. Because this is probably a long case. So this will probably be a two-stream case. Granted, so was the Silver Samurai. Sil Silver Samurai? Steel Samurai. Come on. But this is, since this is probably going to be even bigger than Steel Samurai... <laughs> gotta go. Have fun. Thank you for joining me for this section, dear friend. Hope you... Whatever you need to go do goes good. Ooh. Maya! Hey, Nick, it's you! I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day okay. It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I, I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? <laughs> and yes, this case is pretty long. Ah, uh, well, it gives me a lot of chance to enjoy some Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Even though it baffles my brain sometimes, it is fun. It's a good game. Questioning. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Whew. Oh, and he wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. Why do I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail? True. Mia. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Mm, she sounds like she really did her best. I should check and see if there are any waffles in the local area. <laughs> probably. Probably. Probably should. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. Ow. Would you like to look at this picture? Isn't that the enlarged photo Lotta was talking about? Uh-huh. Huh. It's nice and big, but you can't really see the faces of any clearer, can you? Well, I guess... Let's go to Grossberg! Why not? <laughs> Grossberg Law. Apparently Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Well, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. If the case lasts that long. Why do I have to move from the detention center to everything else? That's kind of weird. Police Department. Detective Gumshoe's not here. Gumshoe's at the scene again today. Huh? Oh, really? He's a live wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Well, then off we go to Gord Lake. Detective, Dave, Detective, where are you? There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. Let's go to the public beach. Haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through the nose on a date with that lovely Kianse. <laughs> she just so happened to return. Right <laughs> from Hawaii the day after Christmas. Hey, Detective Gumshoe! Hey, pal! Trial today, uh... It, uh... Yes? What about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Mr. Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Er, uh, thanks. Hmm. I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Huh? She's not on bail yet. 
That's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had it up, had their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff, I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice, Edgeworth? He was really grateful for what she did, you know. Tomorrow's trial. Detective Gumshoe, any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? It sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, uh who was it? S sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. All right, I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does. And him becoming a prosecutor. And him being scared of earthquakes. It all started with that incident. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. I'm gonna head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, wait, um, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about it. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. All right, pal. Well, don't forget to pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. Ha! <laughs> Doubtful. I'm gonna quickly head back to... Detention, so that we can maybe pick up Maya. Hey, Nick! You finally came! They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go! Free at last, eh? Those interrogators were really mean! Or like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Mm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for the bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. We're going to check out the boat now. <laughs> or see what else happens now that we have uh, Maya with us. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all! Hey, it's Lada! Y'all really did it today. What did we do? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking, a little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing many old thing that came to mind. Lada. So, you see, I wanted to make it up to y'all. Make it up? Today's trial. What did you think of the trial? To be honest, I was doing it half just to say I'd be in a witness. Even though I didn't really see anything. I kind of convinced myself I had, though. I'm sorry, I know I caused y'all a lot of trouble. Well, memory is a tricky, vague little thing. Yeah, I sure know that now. I'll be fine the next time I, wi <laughs> I witness a murder. Oh, please. Please tell me that she ends up witnessing another murder in a sequel. That would be the greatest payoff ever. Right. You mean the first time you witness a murder? Well, that's also true. What about Gordy? Right! Well, the way I figured, the only trial was stoking the flames of Gordy fever. I'll get my exclusive photos and rocket to stardom. All right, Lada, you go! I wish I could be an investigative photo- photogra My brain hates any word that comes out of photo. Photographer. Photographing. Ah. Finish your spirit medium training first. Making it up. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see, actually I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. W what information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Uh, exchange? Um, I thought it was to make up to us. Right, I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey, I see you thinking, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. 
Let me tell you, the most summoners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception. I love that she is just so upfront with, I'm the dumb one. <laughs> she is, Lot is a nice character. Well, what'll it be? We gonna deal or not? What do we do, Nick? <laughs> Let's deal. We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have any choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? Get completely off your rocker? I mean, I'd be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Well, well, Gordy? But Gordy doesn't, I mean, Gordy might not exist. That bring me proof that shows he don't exist. Uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something? Y'all come to me first. Got it? Okay. Right. See y'all later. Okay, Nick, let's go get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay. And how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist. You know, now I want a Phoenix Wright Scooby-Doo-like crossover. That would be nice. Well, to the public beach. Larry, what the fuck have you done? Steel Samurai isn't even in the season anymore. What's that? The, the Steel Samurai, Nick? Yo, Maya! Larry, what the heck is that? Oh, it was my girl Kansei's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here, it would be like really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow, that's really impressive. She could find those for you. Well, yeah, she knows a lot of people. And that, show, and that show's finished now, so she got him for free. Right. Is this, is this? The Steel Samurai is gonna turn out to be Gordy, isn't he? Doesn't that Steel Samurai look a little off place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this Steel Samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh, really? That looks pretty well made to me. Hm, <laughs> still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These Steel Samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. I do like that they brought back the Steel Samurai music for this, though. <laughs> Edgeworth. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgy? Well, we made it through the first day in court, all right. I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh. Hey, Larry, did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Huh. That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No, really? Well, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transferred? Right, when the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. The big samurai. Hey, Larry, when did you get that big thing, huh? Oh, the big guy? Well, I've had that for about a month, yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it here yesterday? Huh? Huh? Oh, right. The, the compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's a little unit unit by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put it air in the Steel Samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh, and here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. Hmm. Well, I guess let's go to the rental shop. Ah, will we have access? It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Well, with the murder on the lake and all. There's probably just a taking a vacation until it blows over. I get it. Can we go in? And I want to knock on a small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone's around. They're probably closed because of the murder. Well, the answer is no. Have to exhaust all possibilities. Hey, y'all. Well, you'll find anything about Gordy? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at nighttime. It is a little chilly. I I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, whoa! No, you don't! No sneezing! What you? Lol. I told y'all no sneezing! See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang! It triggered on one of our karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. 
<laughs> poor, poor Nick. Well, let's talk about Gordy. What, what are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative reporter. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. Uh, UFO. Uh, UFO? Oh, UFO. Anyway, I can't get a career making photo this time around. And that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Huh? So you really are a university student? Yeah, well, I'm taking a bit of a break. Right. Hmm. Maybe we can see? Uh, you know, I was wondering. Yeah? What if you get a picture of Gordy and it turns out like this enlargement did? Y'all crazy! A blurry picture like this doesn't make a hit story. I need a picture that screams, I am Gordy, hear me roar! I can't turn something like this into the paper. What kind of fool do y'all think I am? The kind of fool that would take a turn a blurry photo in as evidence in a murder trial. Not to mention claiming she saw something she didn't see. That, but it didn't check off, so I thought that it didn't want me to. Hmm, so I guess that's just, hey, come back after you get, like, anything. That's the, guy, that's the guy that's selling my hot dogs faster than I can cook them. Do you think Gordy really exists? Nah, I think somebody probably saw something else that they just thought was Gordy. But I'll keep selling samurai dogs until the truth's out. this machine? That? That's a compressor. I used it to fill up that balloon there with air. Huh, neat. Just got it repaired yesterday. Man, that was a drag, that was. Those flags look sadly out of place here. Flapping listlessly and for back and forth on the cold wind under a cold sky. I don't know. I think it gives the place a kind of festival atmosphere. It reminds me of the War of, uh, of the Eyeglasses. The War of the what? Huh? What? You mean you don't know the War of the Eyeglasses? What the heck is it? Our local fair used to do it every summer. Uh, I guess we were only the one, the only ones. I ask again, what the heck is that? Let's double check the rental shop. Nope. Well, there's nothing to do here then. Like maybe I can go talk to Edgeworth. Looks like Edgeworth isn't questioning. Let's come back later. Guess so. Hmm, then Grossberg? No, nope, Grossberg's still out. That leaves the Criminal Affairs Department. Or my own office. Hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go and do something that's gonna hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again? What do you mean again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. Ah. Gordy. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? That monster down in the Gord Lake? No, I personally, no. Well, we're looking for it. Huh? Are you out of your mind? Ah. You got time to go monster hunting? How about doing a little question for me, then? Oh, Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lotta. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Eh, uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid you in your search for Gordy. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Let's ask about the investigation. How is this investigation proceeding? It's not, really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. And the little guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case, Robert Hammond. They're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. And Edgeworth never talks about his past. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow, too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. Secret weapons. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. 
These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. M missile? These are K9 police dogs still in training. It would be kind of weird if Gumshoe was just like, here, have a full on ballistic missile. That would have been funny. Missile, missile, here, boy. Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, a cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us how? Woof. Next secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know till you try, pal. Okay, this next one is the last one. Oh, please, I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to fight it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um... I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either, for the total opposite reason. Well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. Hmm. Because obviously these will all be used like... Maybe the fishing pole could be used to drag something out of the water. That might have pertained to the case. Then there's Missile, who might be able to sniff something out. I think I'll go fishing pole, missile, metal detector for fun. Can we borrow the flimsy looking fishing pole? Sure thing, pal. Oh, if it breaks, be sure to dispo dispose of it properly, okay? Uh, right. Fishing pole borrowed from Detective Gumshoe. It looks like it belongs in The Legend of Zelda. He doesn't even have a diddly D, like, uh, reel in it, really. Ooh, take a look at this pole. You know, you can't catch many fish in this lake. I'm not after small fry. I'm after the biggest fry of them all. Gordy! You really going to try to fish out a monster? To save Edgeworth? Yes. Brings a tear to my eye in more ways than... <laughs> is he saying that she... He, is he saying that he admires her for trying, but he thinks he's stupid? That's hilarious. Maybe at the boat, uh, well, probably the lake woods. Hmm, okay, Nick, this looks like a good spot. A good spot for what? Time to do some fishing! He's serious. Um, what are you going to use for bait? Oh, yeah, oh. Hmm, I figured something like this would happen. We should have brought missile along with us, too. At least then we'd have bait. Oh, Nick, how could you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding! Hmm, some jokes are better left untold. Oof, she hit me. Okay, watch this, Nick. Just try not to reel in empty cans or boots, okay? Here we go. Ah, my leg. <laughs> Hilarious. Hey, what are you doing? Sorry, Lada. Don't tell me y'all are on some film company's payroll. Nick Payer. My poor, poor wallet. Lotta, wait, we're catching Gordy. A fishing pole? Are you out of your doggone mind? Yes, I mean, yes, it's a fishing pole. Huh, I never thought of that. Good luck. Thanks. I don't believe it. <laughs> Everyone is insane. Well, um, well, maybe if we examine it. Can we examine the lake? We cannot examine the lake. Maybe if we go to the boat? The re boat rental? And it seems that the answer is new. There are some boats floating at the dock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's a space for one more boat at the dock. Hmm. So, I'm going to assume that that's it. And here I thought that it was going to break. Mostly because he said, if it breaks, make sure to dispose of it properly. Alright. Secret weapons. Detective Gumshoe, can we borrow one of the other things? Hmm? Yeah, sure, pal. But I have to take back the last one I lent you. Department policy. We'll take your pick. Which one will be? Give me the dog! Can we borrow a missile? Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. He's so cute. Oh, boy. Praise the boy. Very cute with shiny eyes. 
Well, back to Gord Lake. Hey, Nick. Hmm? Missile's been acting strangely. Missile? Uh oh, right. That little creature of the detectives. Hey, I love little doggies. Good boy. Good boy. What's wrong, Missile? Angry. Ah! Missile! Missile! Is it killing? Whoa, stop that thing! Cannibal! It's eating my samurai dogs! I thought it was going to be eating the steel samurai. My samurai dogs. Wow, he ate every single one. I'm sorry, Larry. Sorry! Sorry don't pay my bills, Nick! <laughs> it's going to have to this time. <laughs> And does didn't activate here, so considering that we already got a scene. Hey, would you like to look at this dog? Hey, Lada. Oh, cute. He yours? He's a canine police dog. His name's Missile. Huh. Canines are the ones they use to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Gordy smells like. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. And that seems to be all that there is for Missile, I suppose. <laughs> Let's present him with the monster that ate his food. Hey, Larry, look, it's Missile. Isn't he cute? Keep that mud away from me! What am I gonna tell the big boss? There's a big boss in charge of your hot dog stand? Nick, maybe the stand is a front for a mafia money laundering scheme. Maya, I think you should probably try to look a little sorry about what happened. All right. <laughs> My poor dogs. Poor indeed. Because now you're out of money. Well, I'm going to assume that that's all that there is to that, because it has to be used at the lake, right? The, since it's the place of the crime, we're looking for things. You can have missile back. All right, take the last one. The metal detector. Something, pal. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything! Metal detector borrowed from Detective Gumshoe. Oh, I got an achievement. Secret Weapons 3. Huh. Neat. Well, off to Gord Lake. I will be surprised if this doesn't amount to anything. Metal detector! Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere seller of hot dogs. Uh, let's go to the boat rental. Oh, this is the right place! Nick, it's beeping! The metal detector's found something! Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Because I'm the boss. Nick, look! An air tank? Yeah, that's what I said. Huh, the valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh, huh? There's something wrapped around the air tank. It's like, uh, Larry's, yeah, Larry's flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Air tank of dubious value. That definitely makes me wonder. Hey, Larry, the fuck? What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Say, is this air tank yours? Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags wrapped around the tank? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. That must have been a coincidence. There's a string of flags everywhere these days. Like elementary schools. And used car dealerships. Look, why would I need a tank anyway? Hmm. To inflate something. You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Uh, inflate what? What else? The big puffy steel samurai. Now why would you ask me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right, right. Actually, um, see the compressor I always use is on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it just once, and uh, it didn't go so well, as I suspected. Ask more about the tank. It didn't go so well. Oh uh, yeah. Did you think you could be a little more specific? C come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us, tell us! 
fine. Whatever, it's like what I said, the compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill up the samurai with that. And then... He went into the sky! I knew it! The valve busted open and made this incredible noise! And that tank there took off like a rocket! And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it! What? Off into Gord Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Yo, 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 yo. Um, so the tank and steel samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. 20th, a week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Kayansi gave me, gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. You mean the crime day? It flew out way out there. It took me four old days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was there on the night of the murder. But see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Yep, I knew it. The moment that I saw that big boy, I was like, that has to be Gord Man. <laughs> that was exactly squat about that. Well, Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I've got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop of Gordy for me. Gordy doesn't exist. Well, we found him. Huh? Gordy? Oh, we found him already. What? I haven't seen any monsters yet. Y'all for real? Gordy really exists? Wait, I need proof. You got proof? I have proof. Of course I have proof. No fair, Nick. It was when I went to the bathroom, wasn't it? That's when you made contact with Gordy. Enough jabbering already. Let's see your proof. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here, a hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang? The tank along with the still deflated samurai fell into the lake at the same time. A couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the Steel Samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dream. I'm sorry, Lotta. Eh, it's okay, you win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lotta. <laughs> what happened? I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about the case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for dirt on Gordy, which we did. So tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path there. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks deserted. Just an old guy living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lotta. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah. The night of the murder. The camera clicked twice, you know. Wait. So you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just a lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. Taken at 11.50. Why now? Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry, familiar to all who know him from any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm, someone should whip that butts into shape. Does it say when this was taken? 12.15... This one was taken at 12.15, and this one was taken at 11.50. But it shows an empty lake. 
Hmm. Taken automatically at 12.15. Taken automatically at 11.50. Hmm. Well, that'll be interesting. Have nothing else for you? Let's go to the boat rental. Hey, Nick, this is the boat shop that Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Well, first I'm gonna save. Because we're making lots of progress. It's a parrot. It's a parrot there. Obviously he did it. There also seems to be... Is that like a... Like a locked box or a jukebox on top of the TV? And I guess uh, some kind of... Uh, fishing pole in the corner. Meg, that you? Yeah! Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. The pasta? Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You'll make your old man proud. When your kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running an old man like me? Polly, the kids are home. Hello, hello. Nick, what was that? A parrot, the one on that perch. Keith, yes? I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello. Yep. <laughs> he fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Well, while he's asleep, let's glance about. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello. It ignored me. What? You forgot, Meg. You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly! How you been? Hello! Hello! <laughs> See? Neat. So the parrot's name is Polly. <laughs> parrot added to the court record. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> oh, Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly! <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Maya's found a new friend. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny he doesn't look like the type who'd keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Well, actually, he's running a, uh, a boat shop. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. It's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murders. Aw, oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. This fishing pole looks expensive. Wow, he has a television in here, too. Look, a little safe. Hmm, it's locked. <laughs> We're just messing with his safe while he's here. Really? <laughs> wow, there's lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Really? That is suspicious. My dear sir, the pasta shop. Um, a pasta shop? Yep, you think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know, so that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Yes? Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. The dough tossing? You too, Keith. Yes, you'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta Wrangler of the West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Yes? You know the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course, everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up this all in the family trade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what it is. Let's ask about Polly. 
Ah, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number on the safe? One, two, two, eight, four. All right. Hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick, all it takes is a little clever thinking and a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. One, two, two, eight. Don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the boss. Alice of Pasta, the wet noodle! Well, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats! That's why I keep the boats out there. Youngsters these days, darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. Well, this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We gotta find some way of getting information out of him. Well, now that he's knocked out, let's take... Oh, come on, let's steal from his safe. One, two, two, eight. Maybe if we show him... Murder! Now listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? Ah, oh, rainbow lilule! I figured out the last color we should use. Indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Let's present him with Polly. Now listen here, Chief. What if I present to you, metal detector? Is there nothing that we can present to you? How about we present to you? Ah, oh, maybe we present to you, Mr. Misty, Misty Fay. Person, do you know? Now listen here, Chief. When I present to you a gun, I point a gun at the old man. Now listen here, Keith. We should add that gun to the pasta. Jojo loved that. Maybe if we show him the face of the dead guy with the autopsy report? Now listen here, Keith. Maybe if I show him attorney's badge? That lo that a lawyer's badge? Uh, yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy's the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Yep. I got you figured out now. Get out, Keith! Nick, now's our chance to clear things up. Um, sir. No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here to investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. A lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Eh, why not? Okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy! Good for you, Keith! Wait, didn't I just say? You too, Meg! Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Maybe if we show him things now. Yep, I see this. You know something about this, sir? Keith. Yes? It's okay. You can call me dad. <laughs> Dad, you know something about this? Yep, the other night, out on the lake. Yes, yes. I know all about that. I seen it. What? Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose, since you're taking over the shop and all. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably not, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. Then I heard another one! Bang! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself, yep. What did he say? Yep. I forgot. 
I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. You need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh, little Terry was just here. Terry? Terry? Yep, the kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing on his face. You must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much more information on this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait. I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget the L6! Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6! What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister, I mean, dad. Nerd. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about DL6? We have to figure it out. Uh, uh, we have to figure out who that old man is. Oh, what? He locked, the, he locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. I'm gonna save before we do that. Definitely seems weird. Seems wacky. That old man. He scares me. Maybe we can talk too. Nope, he's still not here. Man, they are just laying it out to him, aren't they? Grossberg ain't here either. Well, off to uh, criminal affairs. Hey, pal, long time no see. You don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we want to ask you something. Yeah? Yeah? The boat caretaker. You know the boat rental shop down by Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Huh. How do you... Hmm, that was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who the old man is, Detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Hmm, sounds suspicious. Hmm. DL6 incident. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Uh huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edward's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with the current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file, so I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to the case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. So what if we present Polly? What's that, parrot? The old man at the boat riddle shop's parrot. The parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. What? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget the L6! I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station's record room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. <laughs> All right, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past. I don't know. I feel like this is something pretty big, since it's basically been alluded to to a point through this entire thing, so why do I feel like something bad's going to happen? <laughs> Like another earthquake fall causing all of these records to fall on us. Wow, it's amazing. Lee Dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find the DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through the fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is. Uh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. This 
cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons, others are who knows what. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think of the clothes pin is for? Don't touch that, it's evidence! There's shelves stuff of case files in the back of the room too. Forgotten cases rotting away for eternity. Nick, let's get what we need to go get and get out of here. All this dust is getting to me. Understandable. Case summary. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts like a summary. Right. Summary. Summary. Found it. Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. I forgot that this takes place in the future, technically. Well, it took place in the future when it was released. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Yeesh. Wow, that was some earthquake. At that time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours? That would be scary like that. That would be scary. Yeah, that would be scary like that in the dark. I don't know. For some reason, that felt weird. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three when the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Victim data. You have the data on the victim. Edgeworth's father. Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost the days... He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh, it sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Suspect data. Got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm, that would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested suspect in DL6 was Yanni Yogi. He was a clerk in the court, apparently. That's who the guard guy is. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it, but he was found innocent thanks to his defense attorney, a uh, defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yoki, was oxygen deprived, so much so that he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. I don't think that's really a safe practice to let a brain damaged person go, but at the same time, personal liberties and all. Where would Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. But that still doesn't explain how the uh, boat clerk knew. Are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? DL6 case file added to court record. Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. All that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. While it would be definitely fun to continue, we have been going for three hours on this case. And we're only to the second diddly dang uh, courtroom. It says day three, but day one was day of the crime. Day two was first day of court. And this will be day three, second day of court. So there are four days in a court thing. So, yes, this is where we shall stop for now. Mainly because bah, 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 we have, uh, <laughs> there is at least one more. Well, first, we have to go through the next day's trial, then the next day's investigation, and then the third and, well, I guess, fourth day's uh, trial. Unless other things happen, so we have a lot to do. 
which could take another three hours. Probably two and a half if we average it out to be like uh, the beginning of the trial bit to not really count, but diddly dee. We will have to spend a lot of time doing stuff with the next case section. So there's at least one more stream in for episode four, and then who knows what episode five will be, how that'll function, but meh. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, I have two YouTube channels. One is an edited content YouTube channel that I swear that I am uh, getting around to making content for sometime this year, hopefully. Uh, it's Neon Icy Wings, and then I have a gaming channel, Neon Icy Games, and a Twitch channel, Neon Icy Wings. The gaming channel on YouTube, Neon Icy Games, is where all of the VODs end up after every stream concludes. And then if you prefer to watch on Twitch or YouTube, you can choose Neon Icy Games on YouTube or twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. Other places that I hang out are various social medias, because social media has become a veritable jungle of hell. And uh, the main ones are like Tumblr, D Twitter, DeviantArt, Newgrounds. But you can find all my related links in my link tree, which should be able to be found in any major description box on any site. It should be like link dot no link tr dot ee slash neon icy wings. I believe I I only remember that the URL is weird for link trees. Blah blah blah. But anyways, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.